What's up everybody, it's Degenerate J, or as old OG YouTubers said, ya boy. I don't think anyone says that anymore, but my wife, aka my manager, says I have to say my full username now. I prefer J. Today we're going to be talking about Final Fantasy VII. This is a game that changed my life, and I was thinking about the content on this channel, which I'm still going to make, uh, but I, I've been a little dissatisfied. I felt a little bit like there's some stuff I really wanted to share with you guys that I couldn't with the YouTube algorithm, the way everything is. And you know what I thought? I thought, you know what, let's just take the hit on it. Uh, maybe for a while this stuff won't be promoted, but it's important to me to be able to share passions with you like this because this game changed my entire life, my outlook on a lot of different things, and it honestly is partially responsible for the person I am today. So I wanted to share this with you today and talk about it. I know that it's an age-old take, people love Final Fantasy VII, but I think I have some things to add to the conversation that are specific to me. So if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. I do appreciate you very much. We do cover all kinds of fun stuff on this channel, so be sure to check that out. And I hope to see you in the next video as well. Growing up, I would always go over to a buddy of mine's house and we would sit and play games for hours. And I remember playing Final Fantasy X with him and just being blown away at the world. I left his house and we went to Walmart, I believe later that day, my mom and I, and I picked up a little movie called Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. I guess it's a bit of a weird name of a movie for a kid to pick now that I'm looking back at it. But at the time, I remember just seeing the protagonist on the cover with his massive sword out. Uh, the context of that could be misconstrued, I believe. But, you know, he was just sitting there looking badass with spiky hair. And I remember thinking, this is really cool. This looks like an anime. I have to check this out. And I remember just asking him, hey man, we gotta play Final Fantasy VII. I watched this movie about it. I don't understand it at all, but I really want to play it. And he said, hey, you know what? Final Fantasy VII is a great game, but I'm done with it. If you want to buy it from me, how about I just give it to you for 20 bucks and I'll go buy a game I want. And at the time, 20 bucks was a lot of money, but I said, hey, you know what? Let's do it. I took Final Fantasy VII home. I put it in my PS2, which back then backwards compatibility was actually a lot more common. And I started it up and my entire world changed. I think it's interesting to look back at Final Fantasy VII now because in the modern era, I'm a lot older, I'm starting to approach 30, and now a lot of people are having the same experience with Final Fantasy VII that I had with the remake timeline. There's new Final Fantasy VII games coming out. I never really thought it was going to happen, but they did remake the original Final Fantasy VII or a portion of it, and now they're, you know, going their own way with it doing different things, but sticking to a lot of beats of the original. And I played through it and it was kind of like being taken back to when I was just a young teenager. When I was in ninth grade, I was starting to have a lot of problems fitting in. I'm sure that everybody has a story kind of like this, or at least most people do in this space. And I would really often retreat into stories. I would often retreat into digital worlds. I hung out at home a lot, I did have a few friends, but not many, and I was never by any means popular. And Final Fantasy VII to me was a game where I was somebody. It was so interesting to me to be this soldier, to be this person who was so powerful, who met girls who liked him, who went out into the city and discovered things and fought back against corruption and oppression. You know, these were ideas that were actually pretty new to me in storytelling. Sure, I had watched movies like Star Wars growing up, I had watched classic Star Trek, I did understand a lot of these concepts, but I didn't understand them deeply. And something that Final Fantasy VII did for me was it really broke down the ideas of individuality and what it meant to just be a person. Who you actually are, what kind of show you're putting on, what kind of front you're putting on, and what it actually means to find your purpose what it actually means to find your place in the world instead of just playing a part. For this video, I'm not going to get into tons of specific spoilers because I do think people are still really enjoying this game for the first time, and this isn't about the specific narratives of the game, but I did want to say that I know to a lot of people this game has aged. I know to a lot of people the combat is slower, turn-based is not popular anymore. You know, it's more popular to go with fast-paced, quick, 
flashy action, and I understand that, and I enjoy that gameplay style too. But at the time, Final Fantasy was so interesting to me, and still is, because it was also about strategy. It was about picking your next move. What are the weaknesses of a given enemy or boss? Where do I go next? Do I need some kind of item? Where do I find that? All of those things kind of tied together into such an amazing and interesting world that even though nowadays looks very simple, was mind-blowingly complex at the time, and I think still has a lot to offer players who have never played through it. You know, something really cool about Final Fantasy VII is that it is different than Final Fantasy VII Remake, and that's from someone who loves both of them. You can play through Remake, you can play through the new Crisis Core, you can play through all these games, and there are differences in them. It's not just a one-to-one -one remake. Normally, I wouldn't advocate for that, but in the case of Final Fantasy, I think it makes it more interesting. It leaves players asking questions where classic fans, older gamers, are going to be saying, hey, I experienced this thing then, why did it go differently? And newer gamers are going to, you know, play the game, and maybe they haven't played the original, they go back and they're like, wow, there's a lot of things that are similar, but there's a lot of differences here too, and I'm able to enjoy this for what it is as well. Now, this is probably a topic for a different video in the future, but I did want to say a lot of people when they talk about Final Fantasy VII are only talking about this. This is my introduction, obviously, to Final Fantasy VII in a lot of ways. I did watch Advent Children a couple times as a kid and not understand it at all because I hadn't played this, but this is pretty much the core of what people talk about. That said, I'm certainly one of the weird fans who enjoys a lot of the compilation of Final Fantasy VII, so the outside stuff that's not just the main game. Stuff like Dirge of Cerberus that a lot of people dismiss, stuff like Crisis Core, which actually recently got a remake. These kinds of games, too, really do mean a lot to me. I want to talk about them more in a future video, but that's also why I'm showing clips of them here, too, because I count them as part of the Final Fantasy VII that really resonates with me. Something I was never really expecting from Final Fantasy VII, though, was how it changed my outlook on what it meant to be a good person. Now, I grew up in a religious household, and I still hold a lot of those, you know, principles near and dear to my heart. Some things I still agree with, some I don't, but at the end of the day, I didn't have tons of experience with what it meant to be a hero, or what it meant to do the right thing, outside of Saturday morning cartoons and, I guess, Sunday school. You know, I didn't really understand a lot of these concepts very in-depth, and I didn't understand the ideas that bad people could do good things, or maybe someone who was a failure, or see, you know, or who sees themselves as a failure, I should say, could rise above that to actually become a hero. Those were not concepts that I really understood deeply, and Final Fantasy connected with me in a way that I think is really important and special because it made me actually think about these things. You know, it made me think about, well, I'm here right now. I'm not very popular. People don't really like me that much. Uh, I'm a little introverted, and honestly, I have a lot of self-image and self-consciousness issues. After growing up more, I got diagnosed with a lot of problems, both physical and mental. I have a couple of physical disability issues with chronic pain and also anxiety and depression disorder. And playing this game, something that really connected with me at the time was that Cloud wasn't perfect. You know, I was very used to the idea of a hero that improves and gets better over time. They start as a good person, but by the end they are a great person. Something that was so cool to me about Cloud Strife in Final Fantasy VII is that he kind of starts as a dick. I mean, he's not a very nice person at the beginning. He's very self-centered very much trying to close himself off to other people, and honestly, it really did remind myself of me. I felt that I had had a bad time, that people treated me poorly, so I should retreat within myself and not try and make a difference in the world, not try and do anything, just kind of keep to myself and have a fun time and ignore everything else. You know, the Cloud Strife motto of, not my problem, it was one that I lived by before playing this game in a lot of ways because the world was bigger than me, and it was scary, and if I didn't have to interact with it, what was the point in doing so? Over the course of playing Final Fantasy VII, and actually even games around it like Dirge of Cerberus, or Crisis Core, or watching the movies like Advent Children, I found myself thinking a little bit more about what kind of difference someone can make, even if they aren't the most conventional of heroes. You know, even if they aren't a Superman-type character. 
how someone like Cloud Strife or even Vincent Valentine can choose to be a good person, can choose to impact the world. And yes, I know that it is fiction, but that fiction really resonated with me and made me think about those things and really think about the kind of person that I wanted to become. I'm in a very interesting spot as a Final Fantasy VII fan because a lot of people play the game and then they go on to play other games, like I said, like Crisis Core, and they say, well, you know what, this game's not as good, this doesn't connect with me. Oh, Final Fantasy, it never had to be a shooter, who cares about Vincent? Or, oh, the movie's not good, Cloud's just emo. You know, and I find myself not being a shill for the brand where I think everything is good, but I, I found myself in an odd position where to me, there was always something interesting to get out of Final Fantasy VII media. That world, that mysterious world that was corrupted by evil organizations, but also magic existed in it. But also it, you know, had this insane levels of technology that interacted with nature. You know, these concepts, they stuck with me and they really sucked me in, in terms of making me want to be a better person and also help our planet in the ways that I could. You know, I think that the narratives around Final Fantasy VII are so interesting and unique. And I know they've probably been done by tons of other games and movies at this point, but growing up as a kid in basically ninth grade, it was something truly special to me to connect with these themes and this world for the first time and start to give these things thought. Games like Final Fantasy VII also taught me how to read a lot better. They taught me words I never would have learned otherwise because they were text-based. They didn't just read everything out loud to you. Voice acting is incredible. I love where the video game industry has gone with it, but there was something special as well about games that would just have words pop up on the screen. You would read those words. Those things actually did affect my vocabulary and they made me a lot smarter. I found myself starting to know words at school that other kids didn't know. I found myself starting to be able to read better, starting to be able to understand books and think critically. Games like this and Knights of the Old Republic, I really do credit with me being able to actually comprehend the world around me more. These journeys and narratives, they really helped shape me into the kind of person I am today. I know that I'm not perfect, but that's okay. You know, I just strive to be a better person. I strive to be someone who's more understanding, somebody who can actually interact with the world around them and does their best. I think this was the first retro game I really played actually at the time. I know now it's definitely a retro game. When I was playing it, it was probably 2008 or nine. I would still consider it a little retro at the time because it was from the PS1 era. But, you know, other people were starting to play things like Call of Duty 4, another game I really like. You know, they were starting to get into the PS3 and Xbox 360 era. And I found myself going back to the narratives and worlds of the PlayStation 1 and of these old RPGs that just continued to resonate with me at the time. Looking back at it, I was always a little resentful at times towards my parents because I was a entitled kid. You know, I thought, well, my friends, they have a PS3. Why can't we afford that? Well, my friends, they have flat screen TVs. Why can't we afford that? But it's amazing to me to think that if my family wasn't economically where it was at the time, I might've actually never played these games because at the time I thought that old retro games, they weren't actually as impressive or as interesting as modern games at the time. I thought, okay, well, you know, these games are old. I want to play new stuff, but I have to play these old games because, you know, my, me and a couple of my friends that I hang out with, we don't really have very much money. So this is what we can afford. It's weird how now times have changed and retro games are way overpriced. They've been absolutely ruined as a medium by scalpers and resellers and people who just want to make a quick buck off nostalgia. But at the time, these were the cheap options for games, was to play games from two generations of console before. And it's so weird how times have changed because if it wasn't that way, if I wasn't where I was at economically, if I wasn't friends with who I was friends with at the time, I never would have experienced such an amazing world that did help me grow as a person and continues to affect me. I look back at the stories of Cloud, Tifa, especially someone like Aerith and you know her story, which I'm not gonna get into too far here. And I look at what can happen to people too when they just 
lose it, when they think they're more special, more important than other people, or when they're used for their entire life to finally snap out of it, like Sephiroth, the villain of Final Fantasy VII. And I see characters like this, and they connect with me, and they connect with our world. And this video is not just about Final Fantasy VII. Like I said, it's also about the spin-off games, or the prequels, or the movies. All these things, they kind of blend together for me to create this amazing world that shows how much just a few people can make a difference. You don't have to be perfect, you don't have to be a Boy Scout, you don't have to have never made a mistake in your life, and honestly, you don't have to be the most special person ever. Because growing up, I had really thought about going into the military, it was something that mattered to me. Call me naive, but at the time, I thought that everybody in the military was a hero, and so one of my dreams was, I want to become a soldier, I want to become someone who fights for my country, and I couldn't because I had a lot of physical problems, I had a lot of mental problems, and I didn't qualify for that kind of thing. And I remember growing up just thinking I was a failure. You know, at one point, there was a point where they didn't know what my disability was, and I couldn't really move my hands anymore. My chronic pain was so bad. Eventually, I got diagnosed with fibromyalgia along with other stuff, and there are ways to help treat it. It never goes away, but at least it helps. But at the time, Nobody really had any idea what the problem was with me. It was kind of racking my body with pain and with uh, an inability to actually work in a way that my peers did. But because it wasn't super visible, nobody really noticed my disability. You know, people didn't really recognize it. It was just, I was weird. And something I really like about the story of Final Fantasy VII's world, especially in the original movie and Advent Children, and even in Dirge of Cerberus especially, is that you see characters who feel like failures. You see characters who didn't make their dreams, who didn't actually do what they set out to do. You see Cloud Strife who grew up and wanted to be a hero. And he's not. He doesn't really think of himself that way, especially at the beginning of Final Fantasy VII. But he's still able to go on to become better than he is. You see people like Vincent Valentine who failed in a lot of ways, uh, and they are able to go on and make a difference. Like I said, I think these games, the most to me, they're about the idea of making a difference and what people can do, and that really does spur me on to be a better person every day. This is a game series that really did affect and change my life, and it's also something I'd like to make more videos on. You know, I'm not gonna say, oh, everything on my channel is changing, but going forward, I do really wanna make more videos on games like this that stuck with me, games that I grew up with, and especially RPG games, which are some of my favorite games in, honestly, all of existence. Uh, I don't talk about them enough because I'm always afraid of, you know, what will people watch? Are people not going to like this? Are they going to think this is too nerdy? But I enjoy this stuff, and I really do want to talk about it because I think there's so much fun and so much special content in this type of game that a lot of people miss out on in modern day. So going forward, there's a lot of different content I want to cover on this channel. Specifically, I want to take a look at a lot of RPGs, JRPGs, kind of Japanese developed games, not only, but a big chunk of them because I really grew up with a lot of these and I find them fascinating. Things like Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts, a lot of these things actually really helped shape me in many ways and kind of change my view on things and they mean uh, just a lot to me. So those are things that I really do want to cover on this channel. You are still going to see the content that I've been making up to this point as well, but I do want to kind of go in new directions. I know that I'm probably going to suffer for it a little bit at first because YouTube does not like change. Uh, audiences don't like change either. I know change is scary, but rest assured the stuff that I already made, I'm still going to make. It's just there's a lot of other stuff I really want to cover that I'm very passionate about. So I appreciate you checking this video out. I appreciate my channel members. I appreciate my Patreon supporters. I appreciate anyone willing to leave a like on this, subscribe, leave a comment letting me know what you think because I'm excited for the future of this channel and I am glad to have you with me on it. So whether you're an old viewer or a new viewer on this channel, I would appreciate if you stuck around, checked out the channel a little bit more because we're gonna be covering a lot of RPGs, JRPGs, Japanese-centric games, American RPGs as well, and also all the other stuff that we did before. Uh, Metal Gear Solid is a big thing that means a lot to me that we're getting into, so there's lots of fun stuff on this channel. And speaking of channels, we do also have a second channel, Degenerate Plays, where we have played through a lot of different games. We played through Demon's Souls Remake, we're currently playing through Elden Ring, and uh, we're getting actually pretty close to the end of that really long game. 
My wife and I are gonna play through Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis soon over on that channel. Uh, so there's a lot of fun stuff over there. Degenerate Plays, podcast style Let's Play channel where we hang out with you, have a fun time. That is in the description down below. So I hope to see you there. Have a fantastic day, everyone. And as always, stay shway.